Welcome to BizTV Canada, I'm David Wojcik. The Microsoft Windows platform revolutionized the way PC users navigated their computers. Moving from the C colon DOS prompt to something intuitive was nothing short of awesome. Since then, Microsoft has rolled out a cavalcade of operating systems, some with great success and some not so much. And all had the same feel to them until now, Windows 8 has hit the streets and IT expert Sean Jennings from CIM Solutions is here to tell us what's hot and what's not with the latest offering from Microsoft. Welcome, Sean. Always good to have you come in and talk to us about IT and uh, everything that's happening on the internet. Uh, let's talk about uh, Windows 8, and in particular Windows 8.1, because it was introduced a year ago and already we have a new version. But what was the big change from Windows 7 to Windows 8? The biggest change that everyone likes or dislikes is the new start screen. So on the traditional Windows 7, like most of the versions of Windows before it, everyone was used to the start menu. So the start programs, find what you want to run. With Windows 8, they completely redid the user interface and now you have an entire start screen or start desktop. Mm -hmm. which for most people that you give it a couple of weeks and you learn the ins and outs of it, actually start to like it and enjoy how they can customize things, move things around, um, see what's going on with the, with the weather, but you don't have to actually open up a weather app to do that. Mm. So people that learn to embrace it, enjoy it. People that look at it for the first time really hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a big difference between 8.0 8 and 8.1? So with the start menu, or the start screen, the biggest change is there's now four tile sizes. So small, medium, large, and extra large. Um, where in Windows 8, you actually have sort of medium and large. Uh, so you can now have little tiny icons in 8.1 for things that you just want to click on. And you mm -hmm. can have a really large live tile if you want to see an entire photo show or stock ticker um, application updates, they're now a larger application. So those tiles will actually stream information through them? Yep, so any of the apps that are in the Windows App Store are what they call live tiles. So as long as you are uh, medium, large, and largest, it, it actually does update. So the email app will go through and cycle through recent emails. The calendar app, when it's running, will show you your upcoming appointments. The weather app shows you the weather as it's changing, and if you have the stock one running, it'll show you all your stock information without ever actually opening the app and, and consumer resources. Some people have suggested that uh, moving to Windows 8 and 8.1 was merely a move by Microsoft to integrate all of the products that, they're, that they have, so people would really get used to that screen on their tablet, their PC, their laptop, and the Microsoft phone as well. Yeah. Uh, is there a truth to that, or could they d have done something with Windows 7 and accomplish the same thing? Well, I think one of their, their big goals was that sort of a common screen. So if you happen to be one of the people that use a Windows phone, that the interface is the same as your Windows tablet, as your Windows laptop, as your Windows desktop. Mm -hmm. So you only have to learn how do I use Windows once as opposed to, well, my tablet looks like this and my desktop looks like this and my phone looks like this and everything's different. So mm -hmm. it was one of their big goals was learn something once and, and you'll be able to use any Windows device. How about the actual operating system when we, we know the, the debacle with Vista and how <laughs> unstable that was? Um, then we moved uh, to XP, which was a little bit more stable. Seven became more stable. How is eight doing? Is is that now? Uh, uh, it's the latest and greatest version. So did they beef up the stability there as well? Yeah, with Windows eight, it, it's it's really just a tweak on Windows seven. Um, so the stability is there. They keep making it more efficient and a little bit quicker. So a Windows eight device, most of them will boot in less than ten seconds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the one thing that I tell a lot of people, especially that have heard negative press a lot about Windows 8, is that if your Windows 8 is crashing, it actually, most of the time, 99% of the time, has nothing to do with Windows. It's usually hardware or a software driver, because in an entire year of running Windows 8, it, it, I, mine doesn't crash. So the great thing with, with well, 7 to 8 and 8.1 is the memory requirements and the performance is actually staying the same and for some people even getting better. Uh, any improvements on the security side when it comes to the new operating system? So with, with 8 and 8.1, significantly better security on the operating system side and then also significantly improved security on the Internet Explorer side. So 
a lot of people, especially in the XP world, sort of hate Internet Explorer. We're told, don't use it. It's not secure. With Windows 7, Internet Explorer actually became very secure. With Windows 8 and 8.1, it's now secure to the part where, to the point where it'll actually start to impact your business if you don't start to allow things to go through. A number of people use their PC, for, their personal PC, for the work environment as well. And they'll go into their work environment and they will have it um, uh, not tethered, but they'll have it uh, connected to their uh, to the work server with passwords and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. When they leave the work environment, they take certain amount of information with them that happen to be associated with that user name. It is anything happened in Windows 8 where uh, that would protect the employer to say, okay, when we cut you off from the server, then we cut you off from all the data as well. So that was the uh, the big upgrades that was put into that were put into Windows 8.1 that came out in October is more embracing the concept of the bring your own device. Mm -hmm. So you can now have employees that have their personal computer running a version of Windows 8.1 personal, not not the corporate professional edition. They can now come into your office or your work, hire them as an employee. And instead of having to take over their entire laptop and change the way everything looks and, and basically take ownership of that employee's device, there's now technology that will let them access the server, but they're still authenticated and they have to meet certain requirements. And then they can work on folders and have data synchronized to their laptop. But in the event that you know the relationship doesn't work out and you terminate the employee, when you sever them on the server at your office, it will actually send out a call and now all that data is either encrypted and hidden, or if you choose, actually removed completely from the device. How do we know when it's time to move to that new operating system of 8.1? I mean, if you're on Vista and you're, and you're running a business, <laughs> uh, you might have some other issues to deal with. But if you're in one of the later systems, like an XP or a Windows 7, when do we know that it's time to upgrade? So XP, you really have to do it before the beginning of April. Um, you would want to do it before the end of the year just so that there isn't a, a run on corporate devices and all of a sudden there's a shortage. Mm -hmm. So if you're XP, definitely move to Windows 7 or Windows 8. If you're on Windows Vista, well, the day Windows 7 shipped, you should have actually upgraded because it would have made your life a lot better. <laughs> um, and if you're on Windows 8, it's a free upgrade to 8.1. Uh, what we typically see is if you're on a desktop computer without touch, then our corporate users are staying with Windows 7. It's what they know. Their software works with it. The users don't have to learn a new interface. If you're getting a laptop um, in the last six months to a year, your Windows, you, ideally you want Windows 8 even on a regular laptop. Mm -hmm. But if you're buying a new laptop sort of this summer going forward, look at Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, but also look for touch. Uh, once people experience being able to touch your screen and start a program instantly instead of having to move the mouse and open multiple things, you can just swipe and do things. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of weeks that uh, you know you work on the keyboard and you swipe the screen, you touch things to get it going. So it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's quite a time saver and, and you know, if you can do something in one touch to get there instead of five or six mouse clicks, mm -hmm. uh, it, it really improves your productivity. Any concerns with the operating system being 8.1 and you've, maybe you've got some old software? Uh, or is it always uh, downward or backward compatible? So most of the software that ran on 8 will run on 8.1. We've had a, a few pieces where you go to run it and it gives you a little hiccup. But what you can do is you actually tell that software, so you tell your old accounting package, you know, Windows will pretend that it's running Windows 7 and all of a sudden it ends up working, or even Windows 8 or even Windows XP, God forbid, if your software is really old. <laughs> um, and it actually does a really good job. So software that wouldn't work in Vista will actually work in Windows 7. Thanks, Sean, for coming in and giving us the update on the new Windows update from 8 to 8.1. And here's what's coming up next just for you.